Gone with the Wind. Some of you might know this movie. It's a 1939 classical film and my favorite movie of all time. It won 10 Academy Awards, which might suggest how good the movie is. It tells the story of Scarlett O'Hara, a rather headstrong woman during the Civil War in the States. Now, Scarlett O'Hara is the kind of woman who knows what she wants and is not afraid of what others think about it. I greatly admire this woman because I don't think a lot of people can say the same thing. <coughs> Peer pressure. It refers to the influence of specific people in your direct environment on your attitude, your values, your appearance, etc. Peer pressure is tough. It's one of those things in life everyone goes through, and there are lots of ways to deal with it. For me, what others thought of me used to be very important. I arrived here in Belgium with my mom when I was eight, and I discovered a new, and at that time, scary world where people were tall, ate a lot of potatoes and cheese, and the most important of all, a world with a language I could not understand one word of. After a couple of months of school, I learned Dutch and I made friends, so I was happy again. But then something else came up. The other kids started laughing and giggling about my tan, my accent, my eyes, and they basically started teasing me. Those years were horrible because I desperately wanted to fit in and to be just like everybody else instead of being called a Chinese girl while I'm not even Chinese. To get my mind off things, I instead focused on my schoolwork, but my good grades led to jealousy and thus more teasing. I tried to get rid of my accent. I tried not to look Asian, if that was possible, but as a child, to not let what other kids say get to you is very hard and difficult. But I've learned from it. And like Friedrich Nietzsche once said, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. So peer pressure can make people pretty nervous. The expectations of your peers are sometimes very hard to meet, and it can lead to you feeling misunderstood, underappreciated, having low self-esteem. And all these are an attack of what psychologists like to call one of man's greatest wishes, to be accepted for exactly who you are. So when you feel like you're not being accepted, it can be pretty devastating. And there are lots of ways for peer pressure to manifest itself. There is teen depression. Now we teenagers are more prone to being insecure about our status, our appearance. And it's very hard for us to figure out just how self-conscious one can be. If you have high self-esteem, people will think you're a diva or a macho. If you have low self-esteem, people will think you're shy and the geek. So finding the right amount is difficult. Plus, for a lot of teenagers, these six years can either be heaven or hell. Then there is the case that's called a lost identity. Psychologists call it that way because one can feel so humiliated and unimportant that they just throw away whoever and whatever they are just to please others. They become what they think people want them to be. This is something I've experienced firsthand, like I told you earlier, and we sometimes don't realize just how big our influence can be on other people. During the nine years that I've lived here in Belgium, I knew from the very beginning that I was and am different. But as the years passed by, I also learned and understood that that should not be a reason for me to change myself. And I don't think I'm the only one in this room who feels that way. I do feel like a stranger in both countries sometimes. And I don't feel like I completely belong in either. Sometimes I think it's a curse. But most of the time it's a blessing. Just see it like salt and pepper. It adds more flavor into your life. What my experiences here have taught me is that it's our life, our time, and our choice only what to do with the time given to us. There will always be gossip and comments and peer pressure. But if you step away from the group from time to time and take that chance to see life from a different angle, the view can be spectacular. And if anyone says you're wrong, just quote Clark Gable's last line in the movie. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pauline Hendricks. Ladies and gentlemen of the question team, do we have a question? Yeah. Um, yeah, back to um, the Gone with the Wind film. Um, so uh, in what other ways is Scarlett O'Hara uh, a role model for you? 
Um, she's someone who is very confident, who does not care about what others think. She's had three marriages, for example, and um, she always she was always following her heart. She would never give up, and it was during the civil wars, so there was lots of um, um, there was hunger, um, lots of people died, lots of people she cared about, and she always kept on going. For example, her last line was, "There will always be tomorrow." So I think it's an inspiration for us to. Whatever happens, don't give up and just keep on trying because you never know what will happen. You never know when the tides will turn around. So I think that's it. Any question from the audience? Yes, sir, please. Well, I, I like your story about your personal experience and apparently it hasn't killed you. It has made <laughs> you stronger. So my question is, um, are these challenges actually healthy for making you stronger or else without those challenges, would you be as strong as you are now? Um, I think those challenges definitely helped me to become who I am right now. Um, I, I was very lucky to have a great group of friends who supported me and to always complimented me and said that I was perfect the way I am. Um, I do hope that not a lot of kids would experience the same thing I did, but peer pressure is something that happens all the time. In elementary school, teasing is an everyday something. Um, it really did help me. It really did make me stronger. And right now, when someone says a racist um, a comment like that, um, I just you know it's it's fine because I've been there already and I know what they say. So it doesn't really hurt me anymore. Yes. Any other questions? Yes. Um, if you uh, asked to give a speech to youngsters or little children at primary school, what advice would you give them as to how to come into terms with their identity and sense of, uh, no sense of belonging? Um, like I said, it's very important for you to just have a good, uh, good friends, just surround yourself with good people that you can be yourself with when you're with them, that you don't feel like you have to change yourself. Also, um, in elementary school, of course, it's very hard to te from the teasing. I do think that you just have to let the kids know that everybody is different. It's not because um, someone has a different taste of music or a different taste of um, clothes or they have a different skin or culture that that should make them bad or wrong. I do think that um, everyone is different and that people, that the kids should know that early on and that that should not be a reason for teasing. <coughs> yes. Uh, <clears throat> you just meant, mentioned friends uh, being so important in the, uh, for the peer pressure. Do you think then that we as parents have the right or the, even the duty to influence the choice of friends of our kids? Mm, for, a pa for parents, it's also parents are very worried about their kids. Um, I think it's very important that you um, just know who your kids are dealing with, who um, their, who their friends are, and just try to um, try to encourage them to have friends that have a good influence on in them, and just be there for your kid. Just compliment them every day. Just let them know how important and how 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 great they are as themselves. And I think as a parent, that's the best thing you can do. Thank you so very much, Ms. Pauline Hendricks. Very well, thank you.